I've, I've been using the Hero more and more over the rotary hoe. Uh, it seems to do a, a better job and I seem to be pretty happy with that. Harrows, like rotary hoes, are an important source of early season weed control for organic farmers. After getting the crop planted in the ground, uh, it's used typically four days after planting is, is when I want to be back out doing something and typically it's, it's running the harrow over the ground. Whereas corn and soybeans are planted at depth, weed seeds emerge from shallower in the soil profile. So until that corner soybean germinates and nears the surface of the soil, weeds can be killed with light tillage implements like harrows, rotary hoes, or tine weeders. That four to five days after planting is a typical real nice time to harrow, or if that crop is still an inch or so below the soil, if you can get out there and stir up that, again, that top inch or so of the soil. Typically, single pass, if I have to do a double pass after, after planting with the harrow, um, I'll take half the harrow width. That way I can follow one wheel of the tractor will be in a row that I can see, and then the other wheel will be where I've harrowed already. So basically you got half the harrow where you already harrowed and half the harrow doing a new pass, and you'll, you'll do that all the way through the field. Um, and typically the only reason I do a double pass is if the ground crusted to where I need to get the ground broke up a little bit better. It may not look like you're doing anything, but a lot of times it's the weeds you can't see that you need to be after at that time. Blind cultivation or making light passes prior to crop emergence can be a good last chance to somewhat aggressively control weeds on the entire field before growing crops limit the ability to control in-row weeds. You know, you like to use the harrow because that's a good source of blind cultivation to get in-row weeds. So if you can use those blind cultivating tools, I've found that that is really important to get grass in the row. You know, if I, if I see a weather system coming in that's gonna bring rain, I might harrow on the third day after just to be an extra two days ahead, you know. Uh, but then after, after the rain moves through, you know, four days after that, you might wanna be doing something, a rotary hoe or whatever you, you, you works for you, I guess. Which implement to use for weed control just after planting depends on many different factors. A spike tooth harrow is generally more aggressive than a rotary hoe, but doesn't handle residue as well. Farmers with more residue in their system tend to favor rotary hoes over harrows, and because rotary hoes are less aggressive, they can be used longer after crop emergence without damaging the corn or soybeans. But some farmers like Dean do use spike tooth harrows after crop emergence. Corn, the corn can be spiking through the ground as long as it's not coming out of its whirl and, and leaping out, you can, you can harrow it yet. And just scratching that surface around a little bit is all it takes to dry out, rough up that soil and let that top half inch or, the, or inch of the soil dry out. And therefore you can kill a lot of those weeds that are just germinating simply by stirring up that top half inch. So this is, this is what I use for a harrow. It's a spike tooth harrow. Um, it's a five section spike tooth harrow. Uh, it, it, it does have adjustments on it to where you can adjust the pitch of the harrow teeth. Um, and kind of right now is kind of the adjustment where I have it set to where I can uh, harrow corn or soybeans. Um, and it, you know, it, it may look like your, the spikes are probably going to go further into the ground than what you think, but by the time you get the harrow going fast enough, it's going to lift itself up out of the ground a little bit. And that's kind of why I have tires on it, to add a little more weight so it just doesn't float across the ground. If you, if you set a way, way too sharp of an angle, it will dig down and become an issue, get into your, your crop a little bit. You just, you just kind of want to set it so it'll, it'll break the ground up enough to where you're, you're, you're happy with it, I, I guess, and uh, it does a good job of breaking up the ground and, and loosening up the weeds from the ground. Us usually this is about the adjustment I make it before I plant, uh -huh. just to make sure I break up clumps and, and whatnot and get the field, you know, a smooth field for, for the planter to run on. And then, you know, after that you can adjust, adjust them down. I mean, you, you, could, you can adjust them way, way down if you really so desire, I guess. Similar to Harrow's, many farmers like Paul Muggy of Sutherland 
and Nelson Smith of Brighton use tine weeders. Dean says that the newer tine weeders are effective weed control machines, but they can be out of the price range for many farmers. I know there's other types on the market, but for uh, you know people who starting out or small smaller farms, you, you just can't afford some of that stuff. It'd be nice to have, but you just not feasible. Dustin Farnsworth, who farms near Adair in southwest Iowa, says his Flextine Harrow does a similar job to the newer tine weeders. It's just less effective because the tines are shorter and there's less of them, meaning more weeds can get through. But it's also more affordable for someone who's just starting out. I like the idea of a tine harrow that I got pretty cheap because it was older and a little wore out, but it was still a tine harrow. And I like the idea of that because it came a step closer to these new tine harrows that like Einbach and some of these European companies are making that have narrow spacings of tines that, that catch everything. And I like that idea for blind cultivation, but I can't afford one. So I figured the next best thing is to buy a flex tine harrow that acts kind of the same way, just not quite as good. 